Uh, are there any other numbers that uh, you can write down about this picture? That would be 25 volts. This was the big gain we got from replacing the one resistor, the two resistors, with one equivalent resistor. Here, we didn't know what these voltages were. We just knew they added up to 25. But when we write a new circuit with only one resistance, now we can pull this over. Of course, we couldn't do that unless we remember that this was also 25 volts. So you got to pull over the number of the battery. OK, excellent. Are there any other numbers we can figure out about this picture? Uh, yeah. We can figure out the current. Yeah. And see, we're running out of time, so I wanted to use your calculator for that, because I want to get through a couple other problems. You don't get to use a calculator on the test, right? All right, so, yeah, so it's good for you to practice on your own doing these calculations, but I want to try to have enough time to do a couple more problems. So let's work that out on the calculator. Uh, I was trying to set these numbers up to work well, well but I must have messed up. All right, so that would be approximately 2.8. Uh, 2.8 watts. Amp. Good. Any other numbers we can figure out about this picture? Uh, the current of the battery will be the same as for the resistor, so it will be 2.8 amps there as well. That's very important. And now there's nothing else we can figure out about this picture, right? Because we've got two numbers for the battery and one number for the resistor. What we do now is now we move backwards. Now we go back in this direction. Well, which of the numbers from here can we carry over to over here? which would be? 2.8. Yeah. Now, which number is the safest to carry over? Maybe the battery is the safest number to carry over. Because it's the same battery, so it must be delivering the same current. Good. Um, but do we know this current? Yeah, we know that would also be 2.8 amps. And 2.8 amps, because it's all coming from this battery. Anything else we can now figure out? Uh, yeah, we can figure out the voltage. Good. So let's do that. What did you get for this? Uh, 5.6. Good. And now we're done because we've got three numbers for each resistor and two numbers for the battery. There's a way we can now check our work. These two voltages should add up to 25. So let's see. 19.6 and 5.6. 25.2. Why don't they equal exactly? Because we were rounding off. Maybe it would have been better to do things to two decimal points. Then it would be easier to check at the end. Um, so you might want to um, carry out a couple extra decimal points here, because that will make it easier to check your work at the end. Usually, there will be a way to check your work um, using the different Kirchhoff's laws that we've learned. Well, now we're really starting to see the types of problems we'll see in the homework and on the exam. Uh, so again, make a great big picture with plenty of room for all the numbers that you need. And here we used a new trick. Our new trick is writing a new, simpler circuit. And this is something you're going to need to use a lot, running a new simpler circuit. And how do you figure out um, with an equivalent resistor? And we know the formulas to use to find that equivalent resistance. And then what you have to do is you have to ask, which numbers from my previous picture can I carry over to the new picture? Here, the, thing, the key thing that we carried over was the voltage from the battery. And the other thing to see is, first we went in this direction. We went from this picture to here. And we figured out every single thing we could figure out about this picture. And then we went backwards back to here. And again, when we were going backwards to the more complicated picture, we had to ask, which of the numbers from this picture are we justified in carrying back to the more complicated picture? For example, one thing we couldn't do, we couldn't just carry over this 25 volts number and say that this is a 25 volt resistor. That, that, that wouldn't make sense. Um, so you have, to be, uh, you have to be careful about which numbers you really can carry back and forth between the two pictures. All right, so again, this is the type of notation I would recommend using for this type of problem. Let's try to do one more like this. Might be harder.
let's try to use the same systematic approach we used on the previous problem. It's good that you're thinking about that, but that's right. We can't assume this is 24 volts. Yeah. Good. But it's good that you check that. How would you find those resistances? So your first instinct was to try to say combine these two resistors and kind of combine these two resistors. Mm -hmm. Now, then we want to use one of our formulas to figure out these equivalent resistances. Well, are R1 and R2 in series? No. no. And are they in parallel? No. Definitely not. So, there's no way we can replace R1 and R2 with an equivalent resistor because we've got no formula for that. Yes. We only have a formula for when resistors are in series or parallel. Why are these not in series? Because charge that moves through R1 is not forced to go through R2. It can go through R3 instead. So we cannot combine R1 and R2 or R1 and R3. Uh, in any case, if you combine R1 and R2, you couldn't then combine it with R3 as well, I don't think. You, you only make, do one combination, one combination at a time. So there's a couple reasons why this isn't going to make sense here. The most important reason this won't work is R1 and R2 are not in series. Mm -hmm. So I think you would combine R2 and R3. Excellent. That's right. Um, and then just leave R1. Just leave it alone. On its own. So, so I should label this. This still represents R1. But what does this represent? This is the equivalent resistor to R2 and R3. So it helps to put in these labels so we know what we've done. Are these two really in parallel? Yes, because the tops are connected with no intermediate devices and the bottoms are connected with no intermediate devices. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, so then you can add the resistance. So it's 1 over 6 plus 1 over 4. Equals what? Equals... Uh, what would be the whole equation we should write down? R, 1 over R equivalent equals 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. This takes a little bit more work to solve, so let's try working that out on paper.
So I think it looks like you noticed here that when you have one fraction on both sides of the equation, you can just take the reciprocal of both sides. So this is 24 tenths, or 